Okay, Algebra 1, here is uh, do now. So uh, take a look at this. Uh, my cat, Carrots, is, uh, is my older and passive aggressive cat. Uh, actually passed away in uh, 2021. Uh, and like all math teachers, cats, Carrots is a big, big indicator racing. And uh, it always was. So the following equation describes Carrots' stair number y based on time measured in seconds. Uh, answer those couple of questions there, hit pause on the video so you got your, your answers figured out. Welcome back. Today we're going to look at interpreting equations from story problems and uh, sort of the learning target a little bit more specific. You'll be able to interpret both slope and y-intercept in terms of story problem. So here's our notes. For an equation written in slope-intercept form, there's a slope, obviously, circled in red, M, and that will always represent some kind of change. You know, if we're looking at the graph, it's how the rise changes in comparison to the run, how the Y coordinate changes, at what rate the Y coordinate changes in comparison to the X coordinates change. Okay, so it's always going to look like some sort of repeated addition. Okay, so if we're looking at coordinates, a uh, table, a uh, graph, there's this repeated addition. So the interpretation for slope will always be a rate of change. And easy way to recognize a rate of change is the use of the word per, like miles per hour, or points per problem, uh, or the word each, or some other equivalent, right? Like each day my pea plant grows one inch, right? There's another way of expressing a rate. Okay, back to the original equation in green, the uh, y-intercept b, that's always going to represent some initial amount. Uh, initial is another way of saying starting. So the starting place. And sometimes if we're given like a table or something, uh, or even a story, it kind of picks up in the middle. And so it's not necessarily where the table starts from or where the story starts from. It's like where the thing started at zero, uh, zero time, right? And so maybe it started out at this height at zero time. Okay, that's that's the starting amount we're looking for. So back to the do now, that equation we saw about carrots stair number, y equals 3x minus 13. The three represents the number of stairs that carrots is going up each second. So if y is the stair number, every time you add another second, you increase that x number by one, you're going to be multiplying by three. That's going to represent three more stairs each second. For the second question, the y-intercept, that's negative 13. So if we uh, assume that stair numbers uh, have some zero value someplace, and above that is positive numbered, and below that is negative numbered. Uh, carrots started at stair negative 13, uh, or 13 stairs below that that zero stair, whatever we call that. Maybe that's like ground level or, or something. So maybe he's down in the basement, 13 steps. We're not exactly sure based on what the equation is telling us, but it's the stair number he started at. So let's take a look at some examples. Here we've got a table. Let's look at a couple with tables, and we'll do some uh, some examples with equations. So here's the cost of a hand winch from Miller's Rental over there on Highway 99. Um, you can see the numbers there in the table. What rate of change is question number one. What rate of change does the slope represent? So some ways to help get at that. Uh, what is changing and how often? Okay, well, if you look at the table, everything is changing, right? I mean, you go across the time column, that's changing. And also you're going to go across the cost column, that's also changing. So what we're after here really is the rate that they change in comparison to one another. So if we look at the cost, the cost is increasing by $2.25. Every time goes up by $2.25. And at the same time, the days are increasing by one every time that it goes up by one day. So what's changing? Well, the cost is the thing that's changing based on how many days. So we want to put those together and come up with a rate so we can answer the how often piece here. So uh, we've already done the subtraction that we need so we can see that the cost is going up by $2.25. 
each day. And question two, what does the y-intercept represent in terms of the story context? Well, y-intercept is always going to be a starting amount. So it's the, the starting cost, right? Like you go to you go over to Miller's and they're like, all right, you want to rent a hand wrench? Hand winch, you got to pay this much money just to take it out of the store. And then the longer you keep it, the more that cost is going to go up. So uh, what we need to do is find out if we went backwards in the table, where did it start from at zero days? So if I go back from two, before that would come one, and before that would come zero, and then I'm going to back up this cost by 225. So if I subtract $2.25, that's going to be $3.75. And then if I back up one more time, another $2.25 off of that is going to be $1.50. So zero days would correspond with a cost of $1.50. Uh, so the starting cost was... $1.50, right? And a lot of times that's the way rentals work. You pay some upfront cost just to, to start the rental off. And then the longer you keep it, you pay more, whether it's by hour or by day or, or whatever. Next example, amusement park costs. Uh, so again, question one, what rate of change does the slope represent? Uh, some follow-up questions to help our understanding here. What is the thing that's changing and how often is it changing? Well, again, the cost is changing. This time it's going up by 50 cents every hour. So it's kind of a weird way to charge. I've never actually heard of an amusement park charging admission this way, but the longer you stay in the amusement park, the more it costs, right? So uh, what is the rate of change? Well, that cost is going up by 50 cents per hour. Submission goes up 50 cents per hour. Question two, what does the y-intercept represent in terms of the story context? Okay, well, I remember that y-intercept is always going to represent a starting amount. So I need to back up to get what time zero. What would be the cost in this table if I back up to time zero? So back up to two, to do, to do. Uh, so 50 cents each hour. So the starting cost, if I back up, uh, it's going to be 34.49. And then before that would be 33.99. And before that, 33.49. And before that, 32.99. Because those are my starting value right there. So the initial cost was just to get in the gate of the amusement park. It cost me $32.90 and then they're charging me more the longer I stay. Which again, it's kind of weird. I've never heard of that, but that's what the table shows. All right, one more table example here. Uh, again, it's an amusement park uh, admission fee, uh, the slope. Uh, well, this time, there is not a rate of change. It stays at $34.99, stays at $34.99, stays at $34.99. So the, this amusement park, uh, the cost is not changing. So the cost is not going up. It's not going down. It's just always $34.99. Uh, so we could call that a zero slope. I mean, the rate of change would be zero, but the cost is not changing. That's that's probably the best way to say what it represents. Uh, question two, what does the y-intercept represent? Well, the cost is always $34.99. So even if I did back up, well, what kind of pen is that? Even if I do back up in the table to three hours, two hours, one hour, zero hours, like there's no change in the admission fee, right? It's going to be $34.99. So the starting cost would also 
the only cost ever, no matter what, the starting cost is $34.99. All right, so uh, different example. Uh, we don't have a table this time. We're given an equation. We just need to interpret what are the numbers in that equation represent. This equation represents Suki's stair number uh, during kitty racing, y equals 15 minus 2x. Uh, slope, always a rate of change. What rate of change does this slope represent? Okay, well, my slope is going to be the number that is multiplied onto the x. In this case, I need to keep the negative sign attached to the 2. So the stair number is going down. The y is the stair number. That's 15 minus 2x. So as I change that x value every single time, I'm going to be multiplying by a larger number. So it's going to be going down by 2, down by 2, down by 2, down by 2, down by 2. So Suki is going downstairs. Two stairs and per whatever. And it doesn't actually uh, give us enough information to fully answer this. I don't know if it's two stairs per second or two stairs per minute, two stairs per day. So two stairs per unit of time. But I mean, I'm not told what the unit of time is. Probably seconds, because that's what all of the other kitty racing things have been measured in. But yeah, it doesn't actually say. And then for question two, what's the y-intercept represent? Well, that's the 15. That's the starting stair. So Suki started at stair 15, and then the stair number is going down by the, by the slope. Last example, uh, again, they're not actually describing the, the enough, quite enough information that we need here for the kitty racing, but let's just assume it's going by seconds. So this equation represents Pepper's stair number during kitty racing, y equals 4x minus 378. Uh, <laughs> wow, big number. Slope is always a rate of change. What's the slope this time? Well, it's the number attached to the x. So 4 Pepper is going up since the the four is positive this is going this will be going up four stairs and i'm going to make an assumption here uh four stairs each second i know all of the other kitty racing uh problems have been using stairs per second so i'm just going to assume that that is true here even though it doesn't specify and then for question two what's the y-intercept well it's uh, the negative 378 so pepper started at stair number negative 378. So I guess that's a long way down into the basement or or else these stairs are numbered strangely. All right. Well, keep it mathy. Good luck.